We're getting close to Halloween, so I wanted to make something crafty to get into the spirit of the holiday. Today I'll be showing you a trick how to make this adorable Halloween headband that you could easily adapt into a bow tie. And you can actually make it work for any holiday if Halloween's not your jam. It's also super easy to make. Aside from the optional spiderweb embroidery details, it doesn't require any sewing. I've teamed up with a bunch of other Kin Community creators for a Halloween trick-or-treat collaboration. In addition to my tutorial, we put together a whole playlist full of Halloween DIYs and recipes for you to enjoy. So definitely check that out at the end of the video to see what the other channels made. Here's how to make your own Halloween themed headband or bow tie. Start with some cotton fabric with your choice of color and pattern. I went with this dark orange fabric with tiny polka dots. I made a quick template of an 11 by 7.5 inch rectangle by cutting an inch off of the longer edge of a piece of standard printer paper. Then using that template, or just measuring the fabric if you'd prefer, trim your fabric to match that 11 by 7.5 inch rectangle. Flip over your fabric so it's wrong side up, then fold the long edge up 2.5 inches. Then fold the top edge down over it. Using a ruler, double check each side to make sure that your piece is now two and a half inches tall. Crease the folds so they'll kind of stay put for now. Using your ruler again, fold in each of the side edges towards the middle so they overlap a little bit and you end up with a five inch wide rectangle. Crease those folds as well and now we'll add some pretty but optional spiderweb embroidery designs. If you don't want to do this, feel free to skip ahead but I think it looks super cool. Cut a length of white pearl cotton or embroidery floss, thread an embroidery needle with it, and tie a big knot at the end. Our first spider web will start in the top right corner of the rectangle, on the side where you can't see any of the folds we made earlier. Open up just the right side of your fabric and push your needle up from the back, halfway down the crease we made earlier. Your knot should stop and stay hidden on the back of the piece like this. Now, backstitch up the crease into the top right corner to create a solid line of decorative stitching. If you don't know how to backstitch and need a more detailed tutorial, I'll link to my backstitch lesson in the video description below. When your next stitch will be the one touching the corner, don't go all the way to the edge. Just push your needle up from the back relatively close to it like this. Next, we're going to backstitch the next line along the top crease to outline the whole corner, but this part can be a little bit tricky because we'll want to hide the back side of the stitches under that fold. Flip over to the back and push your needle shallowly into just that back layer of fabric. Don't go all the way through to the front. As you're doing this, turn your needle so it will come up along that top fold one stitch length away from the corner, like this. The little stitch you just made should be hidden inside your layers of fabric. For these back stitches, we won't be able to reach the back of the fabric, so we're going to sew them a little bit differently. Push your needle in at the corner where your last stitch ended, slide it along the inside of the fold, and push it out one stitch length away from where the pearl cotton is coming out of the fabric, like this. The back of your stitches should be hidden inside the layers of the fabric. Follow that same pattern for the next few stitches. Insert your needle where your last stitch ended, slide it along inside of the fold, and push the needle out one stitch length away from where your pearl cotton is sticking out of the fabric. Stop once you've gone about as far as the line going up the side and put the whole piece down. Now I'm going to use some air erasable disappearing ink to draw a guide for where to stitch next. Feel free to freehand stitch if you don't have one of these markers or if you're less particular. I'm drawing two lines like this between the lines we already stitched that connect at the corner. This marker helps me to keep them evenly spaced. To finish this previous line of stitching and move on to the next one, insert the needle where the last stitch ended between the layers of fabric and push it back out at the end of this first line of ink. If you did this correctly, you shouldn't be able to see the stitch along the back of your fabric. But now that we're away from the edge, we can go back to back stitching normally. Backstitch up that first line into the corner, then backstitch back down along the second line we drew until you have four solid lines of stitching spaced evenly and all connecting at that top right corner. For the next part, use the disappearing ink to draw three curved lines connecting the open ends of the lines we've already stitched. Kind of like a cartoon umbrella. Then backstitch over those lines next. If you run out of thread like I did, flip over to the back of your piece after you finish a stitch so your thread sticks out on the back side. To anchor a knot down, grab one of these other stitches with your needle near where your thread is coming out. Then pass your needle through the loop of thread that forms before you pull it tight to make a knot. You can make a second one if you want to make sure that it's extra secure. 
Trim your excess thread, then start a new piece. Make sure to tie a knot at the end, and then you can start your needle up from the back wherever you need to continue stitching. If you're having trouble making these lines look curved, try making your stitch length shorter so you have more small stitches coming together to make the curves. Now we just need to fill in these shapes a bit more with two evenly spaced rows of similar curves connecting our stitches, just like I'm drawing here. This is why I'm drawing them ahead of time with the disappearing ink. It can get a little bit confusing if you don't know exactly where to put your stitches. And after a little while, the ink just disappears, so if you didn't completely cover it with your embroidery, you won't be able to see it later. You might need to make your stitches really small to get them to fit in these tight spaces closer to the corner, but it looks so nice when they're all finished, so it's worth the extra detail work. Once you've stitched over all of the lines, flip your piece over and use that same technique I showed you earlier to anchor your knot to a nearby stitch on the back so the stitching stays put, and trim off the excess. I added a second spider web design in the lower left corner as well, so if you'd like to do that too, the steps are the same. The rest of this project comes together with the help from a hot glue gun, so plug that in and have an extra hot glue stick on hand in case you run out. Now take some black glitter elastic, which I found at a craft store, and we're going to make the headband portion. Wrap a piece around your head to measure how long you'll need it to be. You can also do this around your collar if you'd like to make this into a bow tie instead. Once you know how much you'll use, use a sewing pin to hold the loop in place and trim off some of the excess. Glue down the overlap on one side of the pin and press it down on the rest of the elastic to secure it. Hold it there while the glue cools, but be careful not to burn yourself in the process. Then pull out your sewing pin, put some more glue on the rest of the flap, and carefully press that down to the elastic underneath it. Now you'll have a loop of elastic ready to go for when we need it later. Back to our bow! We're going to make it look more like a bow now. Flip it over and use a really small amount of hot glue to attach the side flaps together where they overlap in the center. I'm basically adding tiny bits of glue to make folding this bow a little easier with all of these layers. I also opened it up like this and put a teeny spot of glue in here. You can skip this if you're not phased by it or glue in more places if you find that you're having trouble later. Use a ruler to find the center of the fabric piece. Pinch that spot and fold the shorter sides together like this. Then ease up a little on your pinch so you can put a dab of hot glue under where you're pinching and squeeze it shut while it cools. Back on the front side, fold both sides of that pinch up towards the ceiling, then fold the sides of them back down, leaving these three little mountains. So it's like you just added two more folds on either side of your first pinch. It's a little tough to describe, so you might need to just watch what I did and copy that. Like you did before, ease up on your pinching a tiny bit so you can squeeze a little dab of glue between each of the folds in the middle of your bow. That way they'll stay put. Hold them there while the glue cools. Then flip the bow over and add some hot glue to the back sides of the folds to make sure that they won't unfold back there either. Grab some of your leftover glitter elastic and wrap it around the middle of your bow. You'll want this to overlap in the back, so make sure to leave enough for that and trim off any extra. Now you'll have the perfect amount to glue down. Squeeze out a line of glue along the middle third of the back side of this short piece of elastic, then place it on the front of your bow where it will wrap around that center with all of the little folds. Press it down while you wait a few seconds for the glue to set. Then on the back, we're going to attach the larger elastic loop we made earlier. Dab some glue on the back side in the center of the bow, then press the overlapping portion of the headband down onto the glue. Make sure if you want the glitter side to face up when you wear it, that the glitter is facing towards the bow. To finish up, glue both sides of the shorter elastic down to that loop in the back of the bow, one side at a time, so it totally wraps around the center of the bow and the headband. Pull off any of the hot glue strings you have left, and that's it! I think this turned out really cute and I'm excited to wear it this season whenever it doesn't make sense to be in full costume. And while I usually prefer to sew together projects like this, you guys have been asking me to design a project that uses hot glue instead, so I hope that you enjoyed this almost no sew project. I especially love that this project can be really easily adapted to work with any holiday or occasion you'd like. Just use different colors, a different fabric design, and change up the embroidery to make it your own. If you end up making this project yourself, I would love to see how it turns out. Send me a photo on Twitter at Lauren Myrtle and you might see it in one of my future videos. In the comments below, share a 
favorite Halloween tradition or memory with me. And if you're dressing up this year, tell me about your costume. Don't forget to watch our Halloween trick or treat playlist to see more DIY tutorials like this as well as some yummy Halloween recipes. Check the video description for all of the related links. Thanks for watching, happy Halloween, and I'll see you soon.